So you're starting your first new aquarium. This is exciting, but your fish are gonna die. Yeah. Unless you follow these five tips that every new fish keeper needs to know. And don't worry, your fish will be fine. If you do exactly what I say. This video isn't just for new cichlid keepers, it's for new fish keepers of any kind. All right, let's get this thing rolling. Here we go. This first tip may seem super obvious, but believe me, it gets skipped by so many new fish keepers. You need to research the fish you have and the tank you're gonna use before you buy your fish. These are angelfish and geophagus. And just by the name angelfish, you'd, you'd have no idea that they can be quite aggressive. And both of these fish need different water parameters than these guys do. This is my African cichlid tank, Alcatraz, in case you don't know. They also need a larger tank generally than the angelfish and geos do. But if I put those fish with my African cichlids, these guys would tear them apart because African cichlids are complete nut jobs. But fortunately, I did my research before I bought my tanks and my fish. So I bought the right size tanks and then I didn't run into any abnormal surprises with the fish that I chose. The first thing you'll need to know is the max tank size that you have room for. That'll let you know your limit. And it won't do you any good to start looking for fish if you don't even know how much room you have for them. Now that you know that, go online and start looking. If you're looking for non-cichlids, then I recommend Imperial Tropicals to do your searching. I've usually had a good experience with them when I ordered as well. They're not a sponsor of this channel, by the way. But if you're looking for cichlids, then Ron Cichlids is a great place to look and they are a sponsor. They'll give you 10% off your entire order if you use this code at checkout. There are so many different options out there. Look for fish that catch your eye and then read about them and find out if they're evil or not. Decide on your favorite type of fish, read about their requirements and skill level required. Don't just look for information about the fish in one place either. I'll look on the sellers page and then I'll look on trusted Google sites as well and then YouTubers that I trust. I'll usually find out about what kind of tank mates go with them so you know how to create a stocking list. For example, you won't want to put these with these because those little guys can nip at your angelfish's fins, making their lives a living nightmare. I hate this. You'll also read about what types of tank decor, like rocks, plants, SpongeBob, pineapple under the sea. Ew. The fish will require to be happy. Some fish like bare bones tanks and others like something cool going on. Some need sand and others are fine with gravel, things like that. Give them what they like, they deserve it. You'll read about a minimum tank size too, and that's the bare minimum. And most people out there don't say this, but I recommend going at least a step up from that. If the fish require a 29 gallon tank, then maybe hop up to a 40 gallon breeder or a 50 gallon and read about whether the fish most need height or length. Here's a really tall tank that would be great for angelfish because angelfish get really tall. Here's a longer tank that'd be wonderful for guys who like to swim back and forth in longer stretches. Keep this in mind when you're looking at tanks. And the smaller tank you decide on, the less forgiving it will be. If you accidentally introduce a contaminant in the water, for instance, the smaller tank will feel the effects much more intensely than a larger tank. Dilution is the solution to the pollution. Well, at least to some degree. The typical advice is to get the largest tank that your space will allow. But I wouldn't get too carried away with that if this is your first tank, because you don't want to spend an outrageous amount of money on a custom tank and then decide you want to get rid of it all a couple months later because it's not for you. But whatever size tank you choose, make sure that your floor can handle that much weight. Some of these larger tanks can get upwards of two, three, four thousand pounds, maybe even more, and believe me, you don't want one of these tanks come crashing down inside your apartment or house. And if you've made it this far in the video, I know that you will subscribe or someone dies. Ding, ding. I remember when I was in your place, just looking for my first tank. And I was thinking, oh, I could afford that tank. That doesn't seem too bad. And that one's a little bigger. I could probably afford that one too. And then I remembered that I'm forgetting something everything that goes with it. I mean, you buy the tank, but then you have to get the heaters, the controller, the lights. I mean, and all that stuff adds up. And so even getting a tiny tank, it ain't cheap. You have your filters, heaters, temperature controllers, the stand if your tank doesn't come with one, lights, substrate, medications you should always keep on hand, nets for catching fish, a water parameter test kit, scrubbers, plus all the fish you decided on after doing your research. Some aquariums are sold as kits and they include some of those things. But my advice would be to steer clear of those things because those package deals, they usually come with lower end stuff and it won't be long before you're dissatisfied with it and you're gonna end up buying it all again anyway. 
You might not need a huge canister filter like these bad boys here, but you'll want to get a great filter that'll keep your water clean and your fish healthy. There are some things that don't matter as much as others of course, like equipment that is vital in keeping your fish alive is something you don't want to skimp on at all. You don't want your filters or heaters to stop working because your fish will die. A light, however, isn't critical to the survival of your fish at all, so if you want to go cheap here, you can. Or you can even go without a light, but just keep in mind that if you really want to see those colors pop on your fish, you'll eventually want to go with a light that's pretty decent. I know what you're thinking. You got your tank all set up, it's ready to go. Just go get your fish and throw them in, right? Well, not so fast. If you do that, and that's what a lot of new fish keepers do, your fish are all gonna die. And the reason is because of something that your tank doesn't have yet, that you can't even see when it's there. It's called bacteria. But not just any bacteria. We're talking about beneficial bacteria. And without it, your fish aren't gonna make it. Here's the thing. Everything that's organic inside your tank produces waste, and this waste turns into ammonia. When you feed your fish, all's good, until they poop. And what's that poop do? It decays, turns into ammonia. And if you have plants, dying leaves produce ammonia too. The more fish you have, the more ammonia you'll have. And you have to get rid of it somehow. But that's what the beneficial bacteria is gonna do for you. It's called the nitrogen cycle, and you need to know this before you start your fish tank. This isn't a full tutorial on the nitrogen cycle. There are a ton of videos out there that you can find on YouTube. So make sure you research it thoroughly and find out exactly what you need to do to get your tank cycled, which is, that's what it's called when you get your beneficial bacteria going. But in a nutshell for this video, what you wanna do is get your beneficial bacteria started, which will start eating up that ammonia. Whenever your fish poop and whenever your plants die, anything organic that's wasting away in your tank is gonna create ammonia that beneficial bacteria will start eating that ammonia, and then it releases a toxin called nitrite, which is still really deadly for your fish. So then you have to develop a new beneficial bacteria that will eat that, and when it eats it, it turns it into nitrate, which is much less deadly for your fish, but still not good for them. So what you have to do is get more bacteria that'll eat that. Well, not really. This one's on you. The best way to get rid of this is to either have a lot of plants in your tank, or do what most of us do, and that's a lot of water changes. Once you have all that going on sufficiently in your tank, your tank is what's called cycled. There are different ways to cycle a tank, but the easiest way is to borrow enough filter material from an established tank somewhere that'll support the amount of fish you'll be adding and then stuff that into your filter. A sponge filter works great for this. So if you know someone who has a healthy tank, maybe they'll let you borrow some of their filter media, or you can steal it. You might have thought that one tank is all you'll need for your fish, but you're way off, my friend. I mean, sure, you'll eventually want more tanks, but you also need an extra one at the start. It's called a quarantine tank. It's where you put all the new fish you get when they first arrive, just in case they're infected with some horrible disease that could spread to your main aquarium. I'm not sick. Of course, the first batch of fish you get, you don't have to put them in a quarantine tank because your main tank doesn't have any fish in it anyway. This is my 75 gallon grow out tank, which also sometimes serves as a quarantine tank. This is good for larger fish, but if your fish are smaller, then you can just get a cheapo 10 gallon tank from Petco and use that. The good news is that you don't need to buy a lot of expensive equipment for your quarantine tank. A cheap sponge filter along with an air pump, a heater and a heater controller should do it. Don't even need a light unless your aquarium is in a vault. Who would do that? Your quarantine tank can also serve as a hospital tank where you can put fish that get beat up or sick. It's cheaper to medicate a smaller tank. You'll want to keep this tank at the same water parameters as your main tank. So if your temperature is 79 degrees in your main tank, so is your quarantine. If you have acidic water in your main tank, so does this one. You get the point. Then when the fish are ready to move to the new tank, you can just catch them and plop them in. No acclimation necessary. Acclimation, in case you don't know, is when you float your fish in a bag of water from their old tank in your new tank for about 15 to 30 minutes to get them used to the new water temperature. You'll just keep your fish in quarantine for about 30 days to see if they come down with anything. And if not, then you can just transfer them to the other tank. So you have your nitrogen cycle established, all the fish are in the tank, everything's looking great. So you shouldn't have to really do anything now, right? No, and actually that's pretty messed up. This really isn't a hobby for the lazy. And not just the lazy, but even the super busy person. If you're already pressed for time doing things that busy people do, like maybe hanging with friends, and I don't have friends, so I'm not sure what that's like, but this will be one more thing on your plate that you'll have to work on consistently. You'll be feeding your fish once or twice a day, doing water changes every week or so, maintaining your filters. The fish keeping hobby isn't something where you can just set it and forget it. And sometimes things can go wrong and you'll have to fix it right away. 
Or you could ask your friends to fix it for you. I mean, that's what friends are for, right? And I should warn you, there are other important things that you need to know in order to be a good fish keeper, but these five tips are vital to making sure that you're off to a great start. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos with other tips on how to be an outstanding fish keeper. If you have the time, money, and dedication, and the interest, then fish keeping might be a great hobby for you. It's very rewarding to see a thriving environment in your aquarium that you created. It can even boost your self-confidence. And if you're thinking of not just starting any tank, but maybe an African cichlid tank, then watch this video right here where I show you everything that you're gonna to need to know to start your own African cichlid tank. You've been watching The Cichlid Charmer, and as always, God bless you, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.